Got it. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to a very special video today. Um, I am honoured to, to be joined by some of the best lightweight pullers in Australia. In light of Sam Burnett coming over to Western Australia to match up with Carl Howarth and Luke Ramponi, I thought it'd be kind of cool to get everyone in a, a chat and kind of talk about uh, the matches and also what everyone's plans are for hopefully a COVID-free uh, arm wrestling year in 2022. Um, so welcome, Sam, Carl, Luke. Good to have you. Thanks um, for having me on. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. No worries. So just for anyone that doesn't know any of these pullers, Sam Burnett is the under 80 kilo national champion in Australia. Um, and he solidified that by beating Phil Rasmussen recently. Um, Kyle Howarth uh, is the under 95 right-handed state champ in WA in, uh, that happened earlier this year. And he kind of narrowly lost to Mario Tabakas to give some context. And Luke is our under 80 kilogram left and right state champion. Um, probably most recent notable match was against Ryan Bowen's left. Uh, where he narrowly lost um, two to three. Um, when was that? Yeah, that was 2019-ish. Yeah, I saw that. That was a good, good match. Oh, you saw, saw that, it. Sam? Mm. Yeah, I saw well, it. I've been, why I've would you studying. watch that oh, random yeah. match? I've been studying. I've been watching, um, been watching all your videos of Kyle's, Luke's. You probably noticed that oh, a few of you have caught up. Privatized <laughs> I've been studying, you know, that's what we all do. You know? I appreciate that. I'm glad to know you take it serious. <laughs> um, why not? Yeah. You know, I'm so, keen. For us, there's plenty of uh, videos of you at the moment. So we've been yeah, able lots to... of Sam, yeah. <laughs> lots of Sam content. Good, good. You know, so you need. Nah. <laughs> we're, we're all very excited that you're coming over, Sam. Um, Thank you. Why okay. are you coming over all the way to WA to get smashed? on both your arms what's, what's the motivation i very much doubt that's going to happen um i'm pretty confident in my ability pretty confident in myself you know i've been training hard i've been pretty active you know the last few years um I'm, I'm more you know keen to come over for the experience to pull the perth crew um because i haven't really pulled any of you guys except for kyle about two years ago um and yeah the last time i met kyle I just just smashed me like it was nothing. So I'm keen to see how far I've progressed and and yeah. And I'm keen to verse Luke. He's a WA WA champ. Um so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how I'll go go against him. Have you been getting uh tips from other pullers that have pulled Kyle and Luke? Yeah, yeah, I've been talking to Ryan. Um been talking to see how what I should do. Um yeah, been watching a few videos and studying the sport a bit more and seeing how I can counter, counter um, Kyle's press and mm. just, yeah. So. You had a, a match recently with Jordan Davis um, and he looked fairly dominant in that match. But Kyle has a very different, or mm -hmm. a, a very different style, I would say, to, to Jordan. How do you think that will... Uh, shape up against your style on your right? Well, styles make matches, you know. Um, Jordan's a very much hand-based arm wrestler, long, long levers. Um, and, yeah, I think styles make matches. So, I don't know, I guess we'll, guess we'll see. I guess we'll see in a, in a couple of days, next week. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, that's all I can say. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. That's one of the reasons I pursued the match as well, because I think style-wise, me and Sam, it's just going to be – we've both got good defences. It's going to just be full on. So, yeah, I think stylistically, it's, it's on paper, it seems like a great match. So, yeah. I, I'd be amazed if at least one round doesn't isn't a gruelling hook war, I have to say. Um, but very excited to see that. Um how about you, Luke? How's your left feeling at the moment? Yeah, I reckon my left feeling, I mean, there's a little ongoing joke between us 
in the armory that I haven't rested in about eight years. So <laughs> I've taken the last <laughs> about three weeks. It feels like an eternity since I've been on the table. I mean, I did a lot, mini, mini sesh last week with Kyle, just kind of testing it and was feeling pretty, pretty good. It's been a while since it hasn't been pinging. So um, I've just been very focused on trying to get to the, the best form that I can possibly be in uh, by next Wednesday. And um, it's yeah, definitely on track, hitting lots of lots of physio, lots of rehab, lots of blood reps. And um, yeah, I'm feeling, I reckon I'm probably the strongest I've ever been um, based on, you know, feedback recently from people I train with regularly and some of my gym numbers, which I try to keep on the DL. I don't post a lot of my gym footage. Mm -hmm. um, try to keep so my I'll, cards I'll close to my to chest Max, on there. Max lifts. <laughs> Yeah, you post some of those new lifts that I've been starting, but um, yeah, no, I, I feel I feel pretty good in terms of confidence-wise for the match. Like I reckon stylistically, it's going to be a very good matchup. I mean, I can't. It's it's still a big question mark for me because obviously we've never Sam and I have never gripped up. Um, we've obviously we we pulled some similar people, but I mean, I can't really. There's no match that I think I've had that would make him think, "Oh shit!" And just like I haven't really seen him you know, kill someone on the left that makes me think, oh, I just can't touch that person. So just, it's kind of like a, I think it's a real good matchup um, based on what I've seen anyway. Um, so I can't really confidently say which way it's going to go other than I feel like it will be a war. Like I can confidently say it's going to be a, I reckon it's going to be a good, a very good match. It's not going to be any quick. See yeah. goes either way. I think What's it's a lot better moment? match than if me and Sam done left. Like I was saying to Sam in a conversation, my left is very one-dimensional, kind of has one move, and if it doesn't get to that, then it, it's pretty useless. Where it, I think, Luke, you can kind of go a bit of everywhere, so I think it just makes for a better match. I mean, if he's coming all the way over here, mm. kind of want to give him the best yeah. match possible. And I think if, if you can get sure. past Luke, and if you get past Luke comfortably, then I can guarantee that you would have beaten me, so yep. there wouldn't be any doubts. Mm. You know, the yeah, strongest... So sorry, the strongest, no, um, sorry, you go. Oh, that's all right. No, you go. You go. Um, the strongest left arm I've gripped up is, is Robbie Capone, and his left is legit. I think his number one 80, under 80 kilo arm wrestle on left arm um, at the moment. That's a Melbourne boy, yeah? Yeah, Melbourne guy. Yeah. Mm. Well, you Did actually, you, you completely crushed at Queensland States on your left, Sam. Um, yeah. And you seem like to have a lot of good sticking points, almost especially on your left. It seems really sticky, really hard to. Yeah, my to pin. my left actually feels more fresh than my right, like ninety five percent of the time. Like right arm, I it's my stronger arm, so I get in more battles with right. Um, left, I would say I'm better technical wise, like the technique wise, um, and. And yeah, so that's why I think it'll be a good match with me and me and Luke. He looks like he has a good good rotation once he gets gets inside. So I've got to be careful of that. Um, and yeah. Right. So Kyle, you've been super quiet in terms of aside from states this year, which I think you only competed on your rights, although you did compete in heavies as well as your own weight category. Um but anyone that knows you knows that you never stop training ever. You just train all the time. So is this a balance check for you or how, how are you approaching um, your match? Yeah, so pretty much all year, Sam's been somebody that I've kind of looked at and thought, oh, I'd love to give him a go again and, and yeah, just see how his progression has gone and see if I can still kind of get over that hurdle. Um, and yeah, it was kind of just a, a good starting point for me. I feel, I mean, I feel like I'm at the point where I don't need to verse all the the really low guys. Sort of, I feel like I'm at that pointy end, so I can kind of go straight to those guys at the pointy end. So I, I thought around 80, 85 kilos, it's not really much higher than Sam. So I mean, you've probably got Jordan, but I think Jordan's even heavier than that now as well. So yeah, it's pretty much the only logical option to me was to go after Sam, so. Yeah, I think Jordan's around 90, 95 kilos at the moment. Um, so he's pretty Damn. heavy. Yeah, he's, he's pretty strong, yeah. Do um, we know if um, over the top is 85s or it's a reflection of 
nationals so it'd be under 80 do we know yeah i think it might, might be under 80s i wouldn't be surprised yeah, if it's yeah, under 80. Yeah. it'll be the 10 kilo increments usual you seem to be able to make those that that weight jump class is pretty easy sam yeah no my walking around weight is like around 79 80 kilos and that's not that's me not eating breakfast and just having lunch and dinner um but i'm around 80 83 83 and a half kilos at the moment um and how tall are you so yeah about one, 160 one, 158 centimeters yeah what oh really you're a midget yeah i'm, I'm, I'm not i'm not at all yeah Ah, yeah, I I'm genuinely tall. surprised by that. You, I never. Yeah, 160, 165. It's been it's been a I'm few years since I've, measured, since I've measured myself. I'm sure you're taller than that. <laughs> I'd be amazed yeah. if you're 160. I reckon he's joking. He yeah. can get there. Otherwise, towering is going to be a, an intimidation. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah. I actually can't remember. Yeah, it's been a few years since I've measured myself, so I'm not too sure. Yeah. No worries, no worries at all. Um, you're you're uh, up for it with those arms. One eighty, yeah. I think I think everyone, aside from me, because I'm honourable, has a bit of a dirty king's move. Um, mm -hmm. What are the chances that we're going to see some some nastiness? And how how will the rules work around that? Kyle, do you want to go first? Well, I've only got a king's move on my left. I. I... I've attempted to King's move at training on my right and it's just, it's no good. I can't do it. It's not for me. Um, so yeah, I, it's not going to happen for me. Um, what if, what if Sam knows? King's is you though? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, we've got a few guys in the club who, who sort of King's move in those different ways. You've got Steve's more traditional King's move, Errol's that King's hook. So, I mean, I feel pretty comfortable that, if it goes there, I kind of know what to do. I've trained with them enough times that I'm not going to be completely like just out of my league that I don't know how to, to handle it. But um, I pretty much just, I imagine, we haven't really talked about the rules, but I imagine it's just going to be kind of the, the standard sort of, I don't know, WAF hybrid rules or whatever you'd call it. So kind of not, not probably as strict as WAF, but yeah, follow those same sort of guidelines about the Kings move. So I mean, I'm, I've got no issue with the King's move if it's done, obviously, correctly, but... Yeah, yeah I, I, have, I have no issues with the with the rules. If the shoulder drops below the table, I think it's just a warning. If it doesn't come up yeah. straight away, it's a foul. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with those rules. I'm not planning on using the King's hook against e either, either of you guys, but, you know, I won't be afraid to use it if I have to. <laughs> Plans to change. <laughs> Plans change. Come to win, so whatever it takes to win... Mm. Exactly. So, what's what's your current weight, um, Luke and Kyle? My current, my current what? Sorry, your current weight. Oh, I think I'm about 84 at the moment. Maybe 80. Yeah, I'm very similar to you. I haven't weighed myself in the morning for about a week, but yep. um, I feel like I'm a bit heavier than that. last week was 83.5. I feel like I'm a little heavier now, so I reckon I'd be 84ish. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting at about 86 and a half at the moment. So I've got a little bit more to drop in the next week, which I think should be fine. Like I said, I've been taking it kind of slow. So yeah, I'm feeling really good. It's actually good to not be so heavy. I think I've dropped yeah. about four kilos. So I feel it's crazy how much different you feel when you're not carrying a huge gut around anymore. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually the opposite. I'm, yeah, normally I'm pretty skinny and but now i've got something to get a little bit of belly to bring on some weight for this match and <laughs> we're going going good <laughs> you're young you'll drop it off good straight feeling. away it takes yeah. you a bit longer to off the weight now it doesn't come off as easy as it used to uh 22 22 22 wow mm. yeah. how are you luke i actually don't, don't just know. turned 29 just turned 29 so still i'm clinging onto my 20s <laughs> So Kyle's what happens? Old, what happens? I'm curious for, for each of you, uh, if you you win. So start with Luke. If you win on your left versus Sam, what's next, especially for 2022? Oh, I guess I'll aim to try to win at a national level. Then um, that's one title I've haven't secured. 
I mean, well, of many titles I haven't secured. Do you want to sound arrogant there? But um, yeah, if I could beat Sam, I mean, equal to the Nationals, I'd also want to go on the right. Like, um, I don't know. I know Sam's dominant arm is his right. Um, I don't know how big that gap is. For me, my left and right are pretty even. There's a, like, my left is slightly dominant over my right, but there's a few spots that my right kind of make up for it in. So I'd say they're almost balanced. So depending on if I win dominantly on the left, then I'd feel confident to have a go on the right. If it's like a grueling war, then I might be more like focus on like, you know, focus on my left at a national level and then put the right on the back burner. But um, I think the next logical thing after Sam would be focusing on a national title. In terms of people for like a super match, um, just locally, I, I want Bobby. Um, I reckon me and him would be probably, I mean, his right's been pretty mega for a while. Um, I have only pulled him once um, each arm. Like I've got a pin on him on the left in the comp and he's got a pin on me on the right in the comp. So I reckon it'd be cool to do a left and a right with him and see if it's still the same. If I take left, he, ta he takes right or hopefully I can take both. Um, so yeah, that would kind of be my next focus. Nationals and Bobby. Okay, great. How about you, Sam? Um, yeah, so um, looking for this match. Um, I think Kyle, yeah, I've been looking been going to the verse car for a while now. He's um, had my sights set on him. Uh, if I go through him, I don't really have many matches lined up in Australia that I'd really want to verse. I feel like I'm sort of done with 80 kilos. Um, so that's why I'm making the jump up a weight class to verse Kyle and, and Luke. Um, yeah, so I don't really have any matches lined up. Maybe if, you, if any tournaments come up, I'd like to pull on those. How about internationally? Are you planning, if an opportunity comes up, are you willing to go overseas? I'd love to go internationally. Yeah, I'd love to go train over with with, Dub um, with Larry Wills and Dubai. Um, I've actually been been invited by his manager. He sent me a message. He said, if you ever come to Dubai, stop in and train with those guys. So, you know, that would be, be awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So really yeah, that would be awesome. That. It's just going overseas. At the moment, with all this, you know, coronavirus, is a bit hard, you know. So in the future, in the near future, I'd love to do that, um, and just pull pull anyone internationally, you know, from America. So that's that's a long term goal, you know. Mm. Yeah, I'd say that's about I'd it. Say, sorry, I was just going to say if you if you do beat Kyle, um, which I see as uh, no disrespect at all to you, just a long shot. I just feel like he's he's immovable. But um, I'll be the first to take my hat off to you if you do, and definitely say you would be ready unquestionably for the international scene if you if you be Kyle. That wouldn't that wouldn't be a doubt. Um, I think so I'm ready for the international scene in my weight class at the moment. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah, it's Kyle Sevier. Because because Ryan Ryan has gripped up with you know Alan Fisher, uh, Jamie Sheldon, and. All the you know the few WAL old guys, Alan Fisher and, and Ryan thinks I can compete with most of them. So yeah, he's he's pretty confident in me, and I'm pretty confident in myself. So I think I'm there. But I think I think my match with Kyle is, will really will really you know set me set me up if I do get the win. Yeah, so, absolutely. Sure. I know I'm a, I'm a big fan of yours, Sam, and I think your progress has been insane. In the last couple of years, uh, I, I really do echo Luke's sentiment. I, I I'll be really, really impressed if you have, if you can give Kyle a really good match, let alone uh, beat him. Um, mm -hmm. Having said, you know, I'm a, a massive fan of yours, and I'd love to see you pulling uh, internationally as well. Um, Kyle, 2022, if you crush Sam. Uh, I don't think my plans don't really change too much, win or lose. So I still want to do over the top. Um, yeah, nothing really changes for me too much if I lose. I, I, I see in my mind, I, I have it. If I, if I lose, it's not going to be because of a strength gap. Um, I've never really gripped up with many people where I feel like there's a, an absolutely huge strength gap between me and anybody. I always feel like I lose because I make mistakes or just just a technical or, or I just haven't had enough table time. So my whole goal is just to try to get more table time in proper comps. So if I can do that throughout the whole of next year, 
I'm not really worried too much about wins or losses. I just really want to get that experience of ready go and just build that because I still feel like that's my biggest weakness. And, and I feel like that's, again, uh, people think that, obviously you guys think that it's going to be a one-sided match. And, and I mean, I hope it is. I want nothing more than to obviously win and win comfortably because I agree that I think Sam is probably ready to go international. So if I can beat him convincingly, then that just sort of, I'll be happy to, to think that obviously I'm ready for international too. Um, so yeah, it's not really about win or loss for me. It's just, I just want experience. So I mean, if you look at our record, Sam's probably had more super matches than I've had in 10, in, and I've been in it for 10 years. So I think experience is with Sam and it's just, yeah, I just feel like I just need to just not make mistakes. I just make far too many mistakes and just fall into the same hole. And mm. yeah, I just want to really try to just fix that problem. It is a little difficult in WA. Um, the number of pullers um, that are consistent um, pullers in WA isn't a great great amount and uh, we're so far away from the eastern states that it makes it hard to to get a lot of access to competitions and matches against uh, pullers of similar experience or just above or just below us that kind of thing so Sam yeah you've been on a tear pulling everybody um, I, I think if I recall that you were planning on having a match with um Marcus Atira, is that correct? That was a couple of months ago. Yeah, I, I really wanted to have a match with him. Um, just as because I love versus anyone, I'll verse anyone and every, everyone just to, just so I can improve. And I think mm. that's why I've improved so fast. And just not yeah. having that not having that fear of losing, just getting experience. Because every time you arm wrestle and train, you just get better. Um, so the match was locked in, but Marcus was having hand troubles. He has I think he has gout or something, so he can't really close his hands properly. So I was waiting on a confirmation from him for the thumbs up, but he just didn't really get back to me, and and it's just sort of just didn't happen. So right, there's still a match that I'd want to want to get through, and you know, in person. Your brothers yeah. as well look, look really strong, especially actually. <laughs> I was really really impressed with uh, Josh. Um, he just looks. Like a beast, like a hooking beast. Yeah. So, yeah, Nikki and John, the, yeah, the, yeah. Do you train with them most days, or do you have a more regimented kind of two yeah, week well, or three um, week? Yeah, well, it's it's pretty easy because we we all live together. So most days we're training every single day. Um, we'll have arm wrestling sessions at our house multiple times a week. Um, there's been times where I've trained with Ryan a few days in a row, and I'm absolutely sore come home and just do recovery training with Nikki and Josh. And it's good because Joshy, Joshy doesn't like top rolling. He's more of a hooker and Nikki's a, a low hand top roller. So I get the best of both worlds mm. and, and they just sort of tag team and just, we just take turns and, and it's just awesome training. You know, and we have yeah, a good set up. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. Set up. Awesome yeah. set up. Yeah. That's what I want. I need somebody to move in next door. <laughs> Any takers? I, de I desperately try to get my brothers into the sport, but they they didn't come anywhere near it. They didn't want any part of it. We are um, good. Oh, so you go. Sorry, I was just going to say now my brother's got infant arms. He's a race car driver. <laughs> Can't do anything <laughs> physical other than that. So you're lucky. Yes, training um, crew is the best thing. Yeah. So. So I, what what makes yeah, go ahead, Sam. so what makes Nikki a really good armor saw is for for years he used to just chop up wood like at, at our last property because we we lived on acreage so he used to chop up wood by hand and sell trailer loads um so he can save up money to buy a, his first dirt bike so it was out outside you know using a big farm boss as a as a chainsaw chopping up wood so his hand strength is insane for his weight for his weight so. I actually rate it pretty pretty high, and that's why he gets most of his wins. Mm. And and yeah, Joshy just arm wrestles me and me and Nikki all the time, and then that just levels him up really fast. So I think that's the secret. You know, hand arm wrestling is so much about hand and wrist strength, and you know, obviously everything else. But if you have a stronger hand than someone, 
then you'll be able to control center, center more easier and get get more wins. And yeah, that's, that's what I've seen in your last few your last few super matches. It just seems like your hand has just been just so dominant that the mm. match has just been so one sided. Just <laughs> your hand. Yeah, it's actually a lot from work as well. Um, I do a lot of laboring work and wall and floor tiling, so. When I'm lifting up buckets, I'm constantly, you know, squeezing my fingers and holding tiles with the pinch grip. grip. Put the fat grip on the bucket. <laughs> uh, I actually did think about that. So every day I'm, tra I'm training work as just a massive workout, and then plus I do gym and everything else on top of that. Um, and I think that's the secret, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I try and do. I try and do two table times a week and that's that's pretty brutal. <laughs> Most of my time outside of table time is recovery. Um, so mm. having access to so I many strength pullers. For a living. <laughs> yeah. I, I work a desk job as well, so my recovery is just pushing yeah. a mouse around, yeah. <laughs> Good for the fingers. Yeah. Um, yeah think... So how did you find the sport anyway, Sam? Um, I'm really... So yeah, I, I grew up grew up loving arm wrestling, like just naturally versing all my friends. And when I was in school, I'd always challenge my teachers. And my goal was to be the strongest kid in school. So I'd always just train and verse anyone in arm in arm wrestling, like the year 12s. And um, so I moved to Brisbane and it was it was on it was on a Friday afternoon at work, and we were packing up tools and on the radio, there was an ad for the um the, the national championships at the Pedo Hotel in Brisbane and dad was like oh Sam let's let's go down you should enter in it I'm like I wasn't keen I'm like nah I'll get get destroyed and I was like nah I'm not doing it but my dad actually convinced me to you know he took me down he convinced me to enter in it and yeah it all started from there I won my first arm wrestling match didn't know anything about arm wrestling and my first comp was the national arm wrestling championships so I won my first match then got destroyed the next two matches and then I was hooked and I started training with Ryan and all those arm wrestlers since then and never looked back. What year was that, sorry? Uh, 2017. So about a bit over four years? Yeah, a bit over four years, yeah. Mm. That's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, good job, man. Yeah, thank you. How, how long have you guys been pulling for, Luke and, Luke and David? Um. I'd be coming up on, I started when Devon first came to Australia. So I think that was like March, 2013. So that's going to be coming up on eight years. Um, but yeah, a lot of that wasn't obviously training at an elite level. A lot of it was, you know, training for the socials. Um, yep. But um, yeah, and I, I reckon nearly eight years now. Um, that's probably the yeah, biggest you know, difference so. between when we started and obviously when you started, Sam, because obviously you've had such good teachers from the very, very beginning, but it's sort of mm. me and Luke started, well, me especially, we had no idea what we were doing. We were just rocking up the training, <laughs> going nothing but sideways, yeah. and going home. Had Murray to kind of sit down and wrestle me. <laughs> yeah, we, we did that for years yeah. before we kind of figured out what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Broke yeah, two so arms. <laughs> so easy nowadays because like everything's on youtube and a lot of arm wrestling is so, so easy to learn technique and, and how to arm wrestle nowadays you know much better, much better content nowadays for sure mm. Mm. definitely absolutely the heavyweights in uh, australia especially in this year um like ryan bowen and lachlan adair happened recently which was arguably the biggest uh, Australian super match so far. Um, but in general, the heavyweights get a lot of attention. Um, mm. How do you, what's your approach to the fact that your national champ under 80 um, and the only way up really for you at this point is heavier weight classes in Australia? There's a few select in your weight category that can hang with you. Yep. But so once you've had matches with them and you figure out where you're at, such as Jordan, Kyle, Phil, you know, Luke, the, like like you were saying, you, you know, you know, you were setting up a match with Marcus. Is that is that frustrating for you, or do you see that just kind of a natural part of it being a new sport? 
young sport and you don't mind as long as you're climbing and getting better yeah I, I don't mind at all I think it's cool I think it's I think it's cool when a lighter guy can beat a bit of heavier guy um it's just a natural progression of the sport I've sort of dominated my my weight class um and yeah I've been dominating dominating my weight class for the last few years um so I'm keen to jump up the next weight class under 95 which is Jordan, Kyle Howarth, uh, Torben, uh, Luke. Um, so all these guys. So it's just a natural progression. And, and I actually want to start getting heavier so I can compete with these bigger guys. Yeah, so it's all part of it. That's how you, that's how you improve. You know, you, you, won't, you won't improve if you just stay in the same weight class, you know. So, yeah, just a natural progression. But if you're struggling to get to 85 currently, well, not struggling, but... You, you have to make a conscious effort to get to 85. You, when you say talking about putting on weight, is that kind of like the next five years? You want to be like 90 kilos, 95? No, I feel like I can put weight on reasonably easy. Um, it's just just because I, I have such a labor-intensive job. Like the last couple of days, I've been moving furniture um, with this insulation company, which has actually been a really good workout for me, lifting up heavy, you know, heavy furniture just moving it in and, and training on top of that. Um, yeah, so I think it's just a natural progression. Um, but I've actually got the next couple of days off until our match. So I'm not going to be working as hard. I'm just going to be at home, relaxing, eating, sleeping, you know, I'll, up until this match. So I feel like I'd so put you, on... A, so you I'll, might come in at 90 kilos. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> But I'd feel like I'd, I'd be able to easily put on another, you know, two, two and a half kilos, reach that 85 kilo mark in a couple, in a couple of days. Do you feel stronger yeah, when, you, oh. when you're that little bit heavier? 100%. 100%. When, when Kyle first messaged me about this match, I was around 80 kilos. Um, and you can sort of notice from, from when he messaged me up until now, I've gained three, four kilos. And it's made a huge difference. It's just after extra few kilos, the extra few, you know, that water weight makes makes all the difference. Come comp day and you know, all the all the nerves and all the adrenaline's pumping, you know. Mm. So yeah, it definitely helps. I feel right, bigger your arms. I just feel like when you get a bit heavy, you just have a better base. Everything mm. just feels more like secure to the ground. And yeah, I don't know. Mm. That, that that's what mm. I feel yeah. anyway. Just Feels like you're connected more to your back and yeah. Well, Luke, especially you're used to being really under 80 kilos, so you're bulking for this match. Mm. You, you feel I mean, a I, difference? I, oh yeah, I always feel. I mean, there's a tipping point when, as you get heavier, it starts. You know, you get diminishing returns, and then it switches from am I just getting fat? And then, you know, your cardiovascular starts to struggle. So like when I was, <laughs> I think the heaviest I've been is about 95, but that was not a not an aesthetic 95 by any means. Um, that was when I was pulling Ryan a few years ago, um, Sumo which Luke. was right up. Sorry? Sumo Luke, it's, I remember him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, was, I, was, I, can't, I don't watch, I don't re watch that video, not, not just because I lose, but because of how fat I look. Um, <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so I find, I reckon for me, 80, like when I was 87, 88, was probably the strongest I've felt. Um, but then, I, yeah, I can fluctuate comfortably between about 78 and 84 is like a comfortable fluctuation. And then if I get up to 88, it's like a hard bulk, um, but it's still, you feel you feel good. And then if I go over that, um, I think that's the point when I start to get diminishing returns and then you just feel sluggish. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, so I, I feel like, you know, in general, heavier is stronger um, provided it's, it's, it's good weight. You know, it's, 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 you know, either muscle, water, glycogen, things like that. Um, but yeah, I reckon my sweet spot's the mid eighties for sure, especially because mm. I've started training legs now for the first time. So it's started to go up quick. <laughs> Should... you get yeah, I, don't know. I was going to ask tighter twisted around the table. <laughs> I was yeah, going to ask know. how big are your arms? And I'm curious because they look monstrous on footage, but you know, I know camera adds 10 pounds. What, what, what inch are we talking about on your arms? How big yeah, like with a, I think, I think last time I measured them, they were like 17 and a half. Damn. Oh, Jesus. Okay. That's massive. Yeah. 
I don't how can... lean you are. I mean, what would your body fat percentage be? It must be pretty oh, – obviously, right now, it's probably up a little bit, but normally, it, it must be pretty low, yeah? Yeah, I reckon my body fat's pretty low. Um, yeah, when I, first, when I first started gymming for the first, like, year and a half, two years, I just, my goal was to have massive arms. So, so I trained arms, did everything I could, chin-ups. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Mission accomplished, and – and that actually helped me a lot with arm wrestling, obviously. <laughs> and, yeah, you look like that. Do you train legs? Not, not, uh, tip, not normally, no. But when this match was locked in, I started training legs. Yeah, and that's the, that's a big thing. I, yeah. I don't ever train legs. I just no, manage the upper body. And yeah, sub train legs. Every uh, oh, that's a seventeen and a half is a massive arm on a small guy. On like an eighty kilo man, mm. yeah, that's enormous. It's funny how every arm wrestler dreams of being that stereotypical, stereotypical gym. We dream of having tiny legs, so we can fit into <laughs> lower weight categories. Well, that's that's exactly me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks all for talking about your matches. I I thought it would just be fun to wrap up the call with uh, just a quick prediction about. Uh, the big match coming up this weekend between uh, John and Devon. Um, for us in WA, I think it's like 1 a.m. on Sunday. So it's a bit later for you, Sam. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm staying up. I'm watching it. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. So starting with Kyle, what do you, what do you think? How do you think this match is going to go? Just the Devon-John match? Just, just John and Devon, yeah. Um, it's a tough one. I, I didn't like when they done the shutout stakes because I kind of felt like Devin would have wanted to test his hand a bit more if it didn't come down to him not needing to win every single round. And I think that might have won but John why does, a round. Why two. does he care? Uh, he, what does he get out of stake kings if that's achieved? Surely if he wins, he wins. Um, what, what, what yeah, is- I don't know. I, I still think that. Obviously, for the people that are betting on him, he doesn't want to probably let them down. So there's probably a bit of pressure there to, to kind of want to, I don't know. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like he knows people have obviously been betting mm. money on him, that makes and sense. Possibly decent amount of money. So you're not just going to go in there and and drop around testing something. I don't know. I just think that it was a bad choice. I just as soon as I seen it, I was like, oh, that sucks because I really would have liked to for Devon to try to hit out see if his hand could do it, but then maybe it couldn't and John would have done sort of what he did in WAL. But now I think Devin's just going to be, he's just going to be rock and I don't know, I just don't think he's going to give anything up and he's not going to try anything. It's just going to be yeah. sort of a one-way street for him. Um, uh, yeah, I still think John, possibly round one, is probably his best hope. And then, yeah, I think Devin, if he, if he loses that first round, he's going to make an adjustment and it's probably going to be it. So... Yeah, I didn't like the shutout stake, so pretty much, yeah, I think Devin's going to run over him now. What do you think, Luke? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, I was a, I was originally going to say like 5-1 or maybe a 4-2 just because after Devin's secured the victory, um, he would test himself or kind of go to just let John have the lane because obviously John's you, you never write John off. Um, but he might be like, okay, I've, I've got the win. I'll let John access something more and then see if I can still beat him. And that would have been, I think if you let John get something, he's probably going to win. So that would have been the the tipping point when I thought it, it would have been more of a split result with Devin winning. Um, but yeah, to Carl's point with the shutouts, I wouldn't think you'd want to risk losing a match to test something um, if you're going to let down heaps and heaps of fans. So he's going to be aggressively trying to get a 6-0 the whole way through. Um, which yeah, I think it's a little past John's time to hang at that level of Devon. So yeah, that's what I reckon. But I'm yeah, excited to see it, and I'd, I'd love to see an upset with John winning. That would that would be awesome. That's my that's my preference for, for the outcome. That would be the best. Uh, yeah, that would be the best to see. Um, but not I don't the best, think it's not the best for Devon though. <laughs> what about you, Sam? What do you think? Well, I'm sort of hoping. That John wins, I think. 
I think John's pretty confident. Well, Devin's obviously pretty confident as well. I agree with all you guys that the shout out stakes not the best. Um, like Devin's is gonna go 100, percent you know, from start to finish. But I think a lot of people forget that John has a winning record on Devin. But in saying that, John Devin has been more active than than John. But something's telling me that John's gonna surprise a lot of people. Um, yes, yeah, I I think John's gonna surprise a lot of people, and you can tell. Have you guys watched the Neil pickup pickup show? Have you watched the interview with with Devin, yeah. John, and Neil? Yeah, I watch all their stuff. It's, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a good show. I haven't seen it. Well, you guys, yeah, you should definitely oh, yeah. watch it. Um, and you can tell Devin is trying really hard to get in John's head, but John's just, you know, you can't crack John. I think he's a master of all mind games. And you can see Devin was getting like unrailed, you know, trying to get in John's head, but nothing was working. So I think I think Devin's definitely nervous. Um, but since it's weird, show- wasn't it? Devin usually just seems unlike you just can't get in his head, but yeah, it does seem like John's in there a little bit. He's, I reckon he's that's definitely living there rent free at the moment. So yeah. yeah. So you think that I is want... a, a reflection of how the match is going to go, or it's going to impact how the match is going to go, Sam? I think it's hard to say. Like, I think it could. It, I think it will definitely fuel fuel Devon because um, John has pissed off Devon. You know about the ruling and how how Devon has gripped up with against um, against Dave Chafee. But I don't know. Something's telling me that John did that purposely just to piss Devin off. But is that a good? Was that a good idea? Or was that a bad idea? Um. So I don't know. I, I, if I had to choose, I choose De- I choose John winning four two, maybe four three. I feel like it. It could be close. But I think John. Yeah. John gets it. But then again, I would have would have been surprised if Devin wins you know, smashes him. So I feel like it would just be a really close match. I well. think... Uh, I would have the... loved for, for this match to happen maybe in like another six months or something. Uh, mm. Give just a little bit more time and, yeah, no shutout stake, another six months. would have yeah. been yeah. even more interesting. I I agree. Um, but I feel like John wouldn't have asked for this match if he wasn't confident in himself. You know, as well, like this is the heaviest John has ever been, and that must say something. You know, and I so, think I think I the think match more relaxed as well. The match in my Sorry, mind will same. be decided by almost entirely in my mind who has the stronger hand. Um, and if we just think about Devon and his hand in the last couple of years, the match he lost to Michael in WAL, he said Michael's hand was. That's where he lost. And then when we compare that to his last match with Michael, that's how he won. He completely dominated the hand. So if he's genuinely, and it's not necessarily a reflection on Michael, if he genuinely has improved his hand that much in the last couple of years, it could indicate that he's got a hand that can bang with with John's. Um, that, that is a good point. Um, but Devin's not as heavy as he was against Michael because he had... He had his match with his. He had his fight with Thor not long ago, so he's not as big. He's not as heavy. That is true, I, but I how much does that weight affect your your hand at that point? Perhaps a, a little bit, definitely, but definitely affects your strength. Um, yeah, so I feel like that does play a part in it. So, so what you you were predicting four four two for Devin, Sam? Four, four two for John. Four two, four, two for, for John. John. Wow, oh, very cool. Three, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah I'd no, have to... No, no. Could, could, be wrong. could be wrong, but I want to see an upset. I want to, I want John to win. I reckon that'd be, that'd be awesome. I reckon John's enjoying being the underdog for a change. That's probably why he's a bit more relaxed, a bit more chill, because he's so used to being the one with everything to lose, and mm. he doesn't feel like... He's, you know, he's, there's no question of him being the greatest. That's not up for challenge. Um, it's just an opportunity for him to reinforce that and still at his age, he can bang with or even beat arguably one of the best in the world. Um, whereas for Devin, there's a lot more to lose if he loses to John now. So I think that's probably why. And this is one of the... Going yeah. As they usually are, the pressure factor. 
And John's I think this relaxed. is the heaviest John that has ever been. And he seems clearly really confident and really happy mm. with and comfortable yeah. with his power. Mm. Like he, I've so never seen John anyone more relaxed <laughs> against a big matchup as John. Yeah, I want John to win. Like I said, I just, that's my heart wants him to win. My head just says Devin Moore. But um, mm. so it's a, it's a win win for me. <laughs> so, what's your prediction, Dave? I reckon it'll be 5 1, Devin. Um, I think even if John can take his, I think John will take his hand in the first round and Devin will do something along the lines of Kings and mm. he'll try and drain him enough. And then in the second round, he'll probably have his hand, if the first round goes that way, his hand will comp be compromised again, but just a little bit less and he'll be able to, to yeah. stammer it out. That's how I see it going. I think the other problem probably for John might be the ease that the strap's a lot easier to get, isn't it, in that the like king of the table rules? Uh, yeah. It's harder than WAL. Yeah, it's harder, but it's. I think it's still... I think still it's have probably to slip. obviously easier than... And I, I mean, I think Devin's got a, got a much better chance to slip now than he did in that WAL. Um, yeah, and that, I mean, that could be the difference as well. If Devin can get the strap, then I, I find it even harder to see a path for John to get through him. Um, yeah, I think John has to try to keep it out of straps and he just has to just clamp and just go. I think, yeah. And Devin also has a, as you said, Dave, um, he also has a Kings and I don't think John has a Kings as well. Like, is he going to burn John out, you know, after round, after round one? So it just depends how well... John's shoulder and elbows feeling at the time if he can power through and press through his kings. Uh, so, yeah, there's so many variables to this match. Just, yeah, you can go for both sides, I think. Mm, absolutely. All right, guys. Um, I think that covers everything to uh, three. Well, there's actually more than king of the table, but John and Devin, can't wait. And can't wait for... Has anybody heard more? Sam, you might be the one to speak to about the Hermes um, Kidvinia match. Is that left-handed or someone... I've seen someone yeah. talking about it being a left-hand match now. Well, Michael Todd, I was, I was watching his stream live and he said, yeah, apparently he's switched over to left arm. Now, oh, Michael, Michael Todd and Rick Beck is not even keen for that match anymore. It's yeah. supposed to be right, but now it's left. Yeah, that sucks. Which, is, which is a bit annoying. Mm. Yeah, no one wants to see that. Yeah. What's a left arm? <laughs> Make left arm great again. Hey. Nobody wins matches. Unless you win three weight categories, then you count your left. <laughs> That's the champ. All right, guys. Thanks, Sam, so much for uh, coming on and chatting. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Luke. Uh, can't no wait for some matches. Can't wait to meet you, Sam and hopefully grip up and have some good pulls next Wednesday. Um, Sam, you. what's your YouTube channel? You want to plug it? Even though you've got tons more than me? <laughs> uh, it's Bernard Brothers Arm Wrestling. So if you guys want to watch, you know, me and my brothers arm wrestle and follow our arm wrestling journey, give it a like, give it a subscribe. And yeah, check us out. Thank you. And you, Carl? Just grip and rip. Grip and rip. Uh, yeah. I don't think Luke has You're even right. a YouTube account. No, I don't have. I don't, I don't even have a YouTube account yet. <laughs> Luke's on mine, so you follow, can see yeah. Luke's lips Follow my life. YouTube account if you want to see Luke. Yeah, all right. So all we, right. we pull all the time. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Uh, appreciate it. Have a good night. I'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Time. See you next time. See you guys. Bye. See you in a week. <laughs>